Hi, welcome back to the Blind LP of Eagle Eye Mysteries in London. We are now on a break from the parade of Dangan Rumpa LPs that I've been uploading because I feel nice, safe, and warm here and well protected from the mental, psychological, emotional damage that Dangan Rumpa brings to you. So here we are on a short break that will soothe our hearts by solving a non-murder mystery case. So let's begin without further ado. We are now going to um, cover the case of the night knavery with Jake. Here we go. I wonder if my voice can handle it. I'm, s I'm still feeling a bit unwell. Anyone up for an outing today? I'm just going to join Nigel and your aunt at Canyon Wolf's Middle Fair. Hey, will they have those huge Henry VIII style drumsticks and real sword fights? I'm sure they will, Jake. I'm especially looking forward to seeing the Queen of the Fair award her knights, the Order of the Fair. Cool, can we get to be the knights and get that too? It's a terrific ceremony and there's always a bit of excitement because if she awards the false knight, she must give up her throne to him for the rest of the year. Interested? Sure thing, Uncle Bess. Star Kaze and I love to go. I love how they didn't just didn't ask my opinion first and just assumed that I would love to go, but well I guess they know me best. Mm-hmm. Alright, let's go to Kenilworth. Kenilworth is way up north by Stratford upon Avon. Stratford upon Avon. Avon. We'll need to catch the train to get there. Okay, Excellent. let's go. I love castles. Me too. Never been to one, but I love looking at them. We haven't been here for a while, I believe. Look at all these people dressed up in costumes. These guys take their fares really seriously. There's Nigel and Anem now. Hello, Stargazi. Hello, Jake. Come for a little archery or, or game of Grange the Wench? These middle-world fairs are magic. My favorite bit is getting a chance to see all the ancient crafts. Just before you came, Stakazi, we were watching a glass blowing demonstration. Marvelous. Sounds sounds good. I love the food and the spots. They've got a rope ladder over there that twists and turns when you try to climb it. But if you can get to the top, they'll give you five quid. At fifty p a go, Nigel, you'll have spent five pounds before you earn it. Have a good look around, Jake. I'll catch up with you when I can. The ferry spread out over all the surrounding towns with shuttles in between. What? The ferry spread out all over the sur surrounding towns? You mean it's not just here? Okay. Just remember to meet back here after the award ceremony. Okay. That's right. There. I hope. I hope it's free. They are awarding people the order of the fair today. Let's hope the Black Prince doesn't make off with the Queen's crown. I'm off to Warwick to Castle to see the juice jou jousting. I knew how to pronounce this. Jousting, jousting. Give me one moment. Oh, okay. It's joust. So what did he say? Mm -hmm. He's off to see the jousting. There's a shuttle to take him there. To take us there if we'd like to join him. Okay, over there by the Dragon Reap kiosk. Alright. I don't see the Dragon Reap kiosk. Never mind, we'll, we'll let this, let's read up. The rules for the f Order of the Fair contest are posted on the may Maypole. Each one who seeks the Order of the Fair must fulfill these three requirements. Display, I mean... Display a true coat of arms, solve Merlin's enigma, and unhorse another knight or deep in honest combat. That's a jousting, I guess. Every knight or dame who fulfills all three requirements truly and honorably will receive the order of the fair and be welcomed in a, into Her Majesty's court. But should a black prince use trickery to gain the honor falsely, 
the queen must forfeit her own crown. Our fair guide says that the jousting at, is at Warwick Castle, and Merlin's and is over on the town green in Stratford upon Avon. We can take shuttle buses to see them when we're ready. Okay, we're not. Let's talk to people. Oh, hey. Hello, Jake. Well met, Sakaze. How do you like the fair so far? This is the first year I've gotten to play the Queen's Page. It's fab. I get to run messages back and forth from the Queen to, the, to her knights and look after the royal hounds, Maximilian and Tristan. That's cool. What message are you carrying now? The list of the petitioners. Blazons? Oh, okay. A blazon is a description of a coat of arms. When the knights go at it on the field of combat, they have their helmets on to protect their faces. But you can tell who's fighting who by looking at the designs on their shields. Have a look at the list if you like. Hmm, might be important. On the scroll, Abigail is carrying lists, each petitioner and the names of their coats of arms. Coats of arms. Sir Charles Armour, Arjun Ben, or Sir Mark Stalls, a Sir Chevron Arjun, I guess. Sir John Ashford Pale or Dame Colette Louis G uh, uh, what? G Gules Cross Argent? What? I don't get it. How can you tell what their shields look like from that? It doesn't make sense. Thank you. It does to anyone who knows the terms of heraldry. Sorry, Jake, but I must dash. This list has to be delivered to the master of the joust, and after that the hounds are waiting for their supper. Oh, thanks. Hail, fair youth! Art thou not Sir Jacob Eagle and this your famed companion, Sarkozy of Gamer? Um, yes, your highness, I think. What luck you have! I am in need of just such aid as yours for each year at this time. The Black Prince and some fair, some fair guys petitions for my highest honor, highest honor with some false knavery. All this medieval talk is kind of confusing. You mean you need Stakaze and I to help you find someone called the Black Prince? Just so, he attends this fair each year with a different face and enters the contest for the order of the fair, along with three worthy knights and dames. But each year, his effort is full of trickery. Okay, let's see if Sakaze and I have this right. You want to bestow the order of the fair on some worthy knights, but each year, one of them is a black prince who is trying to fake his way with some bogus trick. Yep. Indeed, you catch the very heart of my meaning. Each year, I must expose the black prince as a fraud, or else tender him my crown. Can't thou help me? If you don't figure out which knight is a fake, you'll have to give up your crown to him. Don't worry, your majesty, suckers and I will figure it out. Mysteries are our game. I guess we'll go to the joust first. Let's go! Okay. Looks like the jousting has already started. I bet there used to be real jousting at this castle back in medieval times. Mm. I say it was my blow that fell you to the ground. And I say it was no such thing. I challenge you, sirrah, to another round. So that th thou mayest have better luck this time, I think not, me lady. As my name is true, I swear I best at you most soundly. Hey, chill. What's happening? I, I, I mean, Sir Knight, Lady Dame, what is your quarrel? This ruffian claims she defeated me in our joust, but it was I who was the victor. Never. See how he lies? I knocked the knave from his horse with this very hand. Rogue, you know this... Tis true that my lance drove you to the earth. Never so soundly as my lance toppled you. Yikes! These two are really ticked off. Come on, Stakaze, let's sneak away before they start letting fly with the swords. Okay. No, not yet. What is that? There's more stuff happening inside the castle. Hall? Let's check it out. 
was there something here too? Did I miss that? We'll check it out later. This place is stuffed full of armor and sorts and stuff. I wish they'd let us borrow some to wear today. We'd fit in, fit in the fair perfectly. Buy your own. Buy your own stuff. <laughs> Get your own family coat of arms right here. Scottish, English, French, you name it, we got it. Look up your last name on our crestatron and select the coat of arms used by your distant ancestors. I bet I was this easy. Cool. I wish I had enough allowance left to get the eagle coat of arms. Oh no, but I spent my something on something he spent. Basically, he probably just, you know, blew off his money. Well, to tell you the truth, young fella, me lad, these family coats of arms are just for fun. Real coats of arms are serious business. Very serious. Not just anyone can have one, you know, and each must all be absolutely different from each every other one. Only the King of Arms at the College of Arms uh, in London can assign you a real heretic coat of arms. The family crests we sell here are just decoration, a bit of fun for the family mental. But if you'd like to find out about the real thing, you can have a look at this book on authentic heraldry here. Good to know. Heraldry is a system of symbolism that defines true coats of arms. It was begun in the mid-12th century AD as a very practical way to identify friends and enemies from a distance. But I mean, you could cheat, I guess. Mm. You could use an uh, you could use an enemy's coat of arms to pretend you are the ally. And then, yeah, okay. When the armies and soldiers began to use to use helmets to protect their faces and heads in battle, it became nearly impossible to tell who was a friend and who was an enemy on the field of battle. To make it easier to tell who was who, soldiers began to color their shields and decorate them with patterns that represented their family or country. As this practice became more common, became more common a set of rules for these patterns developed. The codes for heraldry are very strict. Each coat of arms must be completely unique and different from every other. Many of the colors used in heraldry, used, called tinctures, are still described in the original Norman French. Blue is called azure, red is glace. Okay, oh, this is important. So blue is azure, red is glace, gules maybe, green is vert. Oh, green is vert. Okay, and purple is purpur, purpur. Metal colors are also used. Silver is called argent and gold is called ore. Okay. One of the most important rules of heraldry is that metal colors cannot be used with other metal colors. Okay, so argent and ore is important. Okay. And tinctures colors, tincture colors cannot be used with other tincture colors. So you need one metal and one tincture. The blazon or description of a coat of arms must be exact so that any herald reading it could recreate the shield. The blazon's first word describes the shield's feel. Okay, the first is the background, second word tells the pattern, and the rest describes the details. Okay, background, pattern, detail. Okay. The main patterns called ordinaries are described in specific terms. A chevron is an upside down V. A chief is a white bar across the top of the shield. White bar. Okay. A band is a stripe going from the top left corner to the bottom right. So diagonal. A diagonal line, I guess. And a pail is a stripe going down the middle of the shield. Okay. Straight down. So one is top left to bottom right. One is a straight down. Too much info. As time went on. Families passed down their coats of arms from generation to generation. Sometimes when a great victory was one or two families joined together, the family crest was changed to show it, okay? Every true coat of arms follows each of the rules and coats of heraldry. Wow, that was a long read. I'm not sure my throat can make it. Oh yeah, there is. Wow, that's so tiny. 
Oh, it's Nigel. What? Hey, you lot. Come for the juice. Jousting. You just missed the most brilliant fight. Who was fighting, Nigel? With those helmet sons. Who can tell? But whoever they were, they were really going at it. The one with the green shield came charging up and nearly drove that land straight through the one with the red shield. Then they put both full back and charged at each other like steam engines. Engines wham! They belted each other so hard with their poles that they both flew off the horses. Okay. Of the ones here? It was utterly brilliant. The judges just finished debating about who won and they had to admit it was a tie. They both unhorsed each other. Hello, Jake. Hello, Stakaze. You two just missed some pretty fierce jousting. All the petitioners for the order of the fair have to unhorse someone as part of the competition, so they were terribly serious about it. That was a really terrific yeah, fellow, not yellow, fellow with a silver and gold shield. Oh. Uh oh. Who knocked his up and off on the first go. He was a great big strong chap. The crowd loved him. There was another big bloke as well, carrying a blue and silver shield, who I would have bet was going to topple right off at the first blow, but he held on like a badger and ended up unhorsing the fellow he was up against too. This lot trained for ages so that they can safely poke at each other with those huge lances. The ends are kept to soft pads and that armor they've got on is just for decoration, even the horses are protected. Good to know. In medieval times, jobs were just schemes like this one, but sometimes knights would fight duels. And when they did that, often it was a fight to the death. In those days, they believed that if two knights were angry about something, like who owned some bit of land, they should settle it on the field of honor. People in those days were ever so superstitious. They believed that God would intervene in the duel to see who to it that the knight who was in the right would always win. Thank heavens we have cots and barristers, what you call liar, li liars. Ah, <laughs> uh, alright. What you call, what you call lawyers, now to see that the strong don't always beat the weak. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, some people are physically weak. Like me. Time to go to the other side. Merlin's enigma is supposed to be on the town green at Stratford upon Evan. This shuttle bus will take us there. An enigma is a puzzle or mystery. Two things we are pretty good at. Stakaze, let's see if we can solve Merlin's enigma. I hope that was pronounced correctly. Halt! What will thee let would unravel Merlin's enigma? Ahem, <coughs> it's just me, Jackie Girl, and my pal, Stakaze Gamer. We're trying to figure out which knights have passed his test. The secret can only be given to one who has solved Merlin's enigma themselves. If you wish to see the least of the knights, who have unraveled his mysteries, you must unravel it yourself. No sweat. Stakaze is a champion puzzle solver. Hmm. Touching faith. We'll take a crack at it. Then here is your task. Merlin has devised a secret escape route from the castle at Camelot that winds its way through underground caverns to one of the three spots. He has fled the castle through this passage and must be found. You must follow his path and decide whether his hiding place is truly Lancelot's Lake, Merlin's Cave, or Guinevere's 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 Forest. And touch your peril. Okay, it's a maze. Nice. Follow the true escape from Camelot and click on Merlin's hiding place. Um, which one is Camelot? I guess that. Okay. Alright. Oh, I'm supposed to just click? Okay. Why not we do it in reverse? So, if we go here, we have to go here, we have to go here, we have to go here, here, here. It's a day again. Okay, so it's not there. Oh, how about here? If we go here, oh my god, there's so many. Let me go this one. Here, then go here, then go here, then go here, then we go here. It's a dead end, so it's here. That's it. 
Merlin was hiding in Guinevere's Guinevere's good something. Good dev devs. Wait. That's it. Merlin was hiding in Guinevere's great nope. Guinevere's forest. Great going, Stakazina. Let's get a look at the list of that names. The, uh, that list of names, I mean. Okay. Well done, young scholar. We here we have the rest of the knights who have solved Merlin's enigma. But at last, alas, I have not their names, only the blazon of their coats of arms. The list reads as follows Gules, Cross, Argent. So that would be red, cross. The background is red, then you have a cross, and then you have silver. Then we have Argent Bandor. So silver, oh, this is the one. Silver, then band is the diagonal line from top left to bottom right. And uh, gold, oh, this is the one that's not supposed to be happen. Azure, chevron, argent. So we have blue, the V shape, and uh, silver. Then we have vert, which is green. Pale, which I forgot. It's okay, I can always read up the notes. And then gold. What do you have? Beware, young sir, the steel of the stalls. I come fresh from the jousting field, and my blade is so hard for the blood of the queen's foes. Um, Stakase and I are friends of the queen, so don't point that sword at us. Well said, friend. But let it be known that Sir Mark Stalls will suffer no foe to rise up against her majesty. Lovely Queen Ardalis rules not only the fair, but also my heart. Have you seen her wandering hereabouts? Yes, but she's not here. I think we saw her last at Kenningworth Castle. Why do you seek her, Sir Knight? Why do pledge her my sword and my love, of course, and... <laughs> I thought she's free to see a film with me after the fair shuts down. That's romantic. That's sweet. That's cute. I am the first to complete my task. I pledge my sword to the surveys of Queen Ardalis. Wow. What a terrific sword. I forged it myself in the flames of my own smithy. I am a blacksmith by trait, but a knight by renown. It will be my pleasure later today. To add to the honor of the arm of name by receiving the order of the fair, will thou be present to cheer me on? Sure thing. Sakaze and I plan to have our important part in that ceremony, don't we, Sakaze? Yeah, it's one of you two. It's one of you two. Can't see your arms, but okay. Is that all? Give me one moment, let me confirm. Yep, that's all. Let's solve. Alright, let's see. Let's see who you have first. Okay, Dames is Gules Cross Argent, which is a um, red cross silver. Then we have. Arjun Band or the very suspicious one. Yep. Arjun Band or. There we have Vert Pale or. Yeah. And Vert is green. Pale, don't know. We'll find out later. John Ash and Kulate Louis. Disagree. Yeah, so they are both out. See that? My bad. One more. Mr. Sauls. Got Azur Chevron Argent. So blue, V, and then silver. Yep, it should be Charles Armour. His name is Armour, but he has. but he forged a sword. Probably not related, but okay. Um, let's find out what's pale first because I'm curious. Mm hmm. Pale, 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 pale. No. Pale, 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 pale. No. Okay. Pale, pale, pale. Pale. No. Pale is a stripe going down the middle. Okay. Alright. 
So now we need to find the incriminating evidence that um that says that um two metal colors cannot be used with each other. Yep. So one of the most important rules of heraldry is that metal colors cannot be used with other metal colors. And tincture, then we need this, um, Arjun R. And then we need to point out that uh, um, Charles Armour's thingy is um, uh, both metal. So is that one that says Charles Armour's thingy, coat of arms, I mean? Yep. Okay. So on night, yep. Then we have Nigel, yeah. That Arjun Bandor. Do you have anything before that? No. Okay. And then we have. I don't know whether we should all we should point to him. Um, more or should we point to other people? Okay, so maybe Chevron. No, he forged his own sword. Not important. The knights who solved, and then probably um the one that says he unhorsed somebody. Maybe. Uh, so a knight, uh, blue and silver shield, no, silver and gold shield. Those are the clues that uncloak the Black Prince. Now point out who you think the Queen should refuse the order of the fame. Hi. That's it. Charles Arma is playing the Black prin Prince at the fair this year. He was trying to trick his way into getting the Queen's crown. Queen Ardalis told us that each year one of the fair members is selected to play the Black Prince, the Queen's arch-rival. Each year the Black Prince tries to trick the Queen into giving him the order of the fair by breaking the rules. If he succeeds, he gets to keep a crown. The rules of the order of the fair say that a knight or dame must do three things to fairly qualify for honor. Display a true old coat of arms, I mean, not old. Soft Merlin's enigma and unhorse another knight or dame in honor's combat. So, yeah, he failed the first one. The Black Prince could have been any of the knights we met. Even the Dame Louise, so we had to find out if any of the four petitioners had cheated at the requirements. All of the knights managed to solve Merlin's enigma. And after we found out what the heraldic terms for their shields meant, we realized that all of them had unhorsed another knight or dame too. But we found out that heraldry, heraldry has rules and regulations too. One of them is that a shield cannot contain two metal colors. And that's how the Black Prince slyly chose to cheat. He presented a coat of arms alright, but a fake one that broke the rules of heraldry. His crest was Arjun Banor. A silver field with a gold bar across it. Since the rules of heraldry forbid metal colors with metal colors, the coat of arms was illegal. Charles Armour could have gotten a queen's crown if he hadn't figured it out. It was fun. The annual search for the Black Prince was on once again at Warwickshire's Middleville Fair. This year, Queen Ardalis was aided in exposing her rival by a young fair quest, Starkaze, Gamer, and Jackie Galoff, like uh, High Mysteries. No. Mr. Mrs. Ash and Miss Mr. Ash and Miss Louis. After their argument, good to know they made up. Of the United States, okay. Sarkaze spotted this year's Black Prince presented a coat of arms that violated the rules of heraldry. For their cleverness, Sarkaze and Jig were allowed the honor of leading the festival parade themselves. Cool. I see Jake and Jennifer here. I guess I took the photo then. Oh yeah, okay, I hope your date goes fine. So let's see. So that was done. A nice, good, gentle, non-murder mystery case. So, in the next episode, we'll cover case of the sightseeing spy. So until then, thank you for watching, and goodbye.